Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to my Skyrim modding journey. Uh, today we're starting out, uh, I believe I had said at the end of the last video that I just didn't like the uh, uh, shape of the greatsword being like a, a flamberge, I think it's called, flambergay. So I finally found something called Nordic Blades. Um, I like it a lot. Luckily, when I in, uh, uh, installed Nordic Blades, it had the option to just install these standalone because I also installed Rune Nordic Weapons. And uh, generally, I just like the looks of these. And uh, Rune Nordic Weapons had a patch. You could actually go through and select the uh, believable weapons version of all of these. You could actually choose between this and uh, Lean Wolf's better shaped weapons. And it does the Nord Hero weapons too, which I didn't even realize. And so while these obviously look very cool, I still had the problem of the the shape of the great sword, long sword. Well, I guess it is a great sword technically, that one. But anyway, so um, for this Nordic Swords, I installed the one that just adds all of these. And then when you're in game, um, so yeah, I chose the version that didn't add it to the leveled list because I essentially, since I already have the runed thing in the leveled list, I'm just going to leave that as it is and I will just use these swords for myself. I did ask both mod pages, Nordic Blades and Runes Nordic Weapons, if it would be possible to do a patch for those. And since it's only, well, I guess it's five <laughs> variations for each weapon, but it's only two weapons. And I offered to help, not that I have much expertise too, but if there was something I could do. So anyways, when you do help Nordic Sword, you'll see on top of the, and this is how it often works, the like original version will always be at the top or near the top of the weapon section. And then towards here, you have all these versions with a, uh, full code and they're all called the same thing uh and you can just tell from the fact that i downloaded now i'm not sure what this other other one might be here this charlie 188 charlie one you know i only mean, just find out sometimes there's things that say they're weapons and they aren't for some reason <laughs> or something another one okay so i don't know why there's two but so yeah you can see here that i've added uh this is the believable weapons rune nordic weapon and the believable weapons rune sword and then this is the Nordic Blades. Now, I might just be crazy. It looks like in the preview here, like it kind of has the runed coloring in part of it. Because I have no idea how like, because this was just the textures, I believe. And it relied on, uh, for Nordic Blades, it relied on your other meshes and, and something. I, I don't know those terms uh, perfectly. But it does not uh, glow in game or anything. Yeah. Anyways, I still like the fact that uh, it is another... Uh, gets rid of the flamberge for me at least. I don't really care if NPCs have them as much. That doesn't bother me. So now I've got iron longsword, steel longsword, and Nordic longsword. Okay, this one's just about like the perfect size for me. I like it a lot. And yeah, I think I got this out of the previous video, but I essentially just talked about how uh, I'm going to make it so that, I mean, obviously, I think vanilla this has pretty good stats already so i'm not sure on exactly where in the spectrum it's going to fit but i want essentially for going from uh, iron to steel to uh skyforge steel to nordic is going to be like a progression of weapons that the humans especially the nords obviously can use and with the nordic weapons being at the top for that i'm going to want them to be equivalent to something like ebony or or Daedra or something. I'm not sure if they are already or whatever. But I'm going to be like increasing the base stat for the like iron and steel swords and decreasing the base stats for like Daedric and Dragonbone and stuff. Because I don't want there to be as much damage variation. I want the lower weapons to scale better into the late game, first of all. And I just want them. I mean, because there's just this is hands down one of my favorite models. It is just a long sword it is beautiful <laughs> and uh, i would you know I, I like this one a lot I, I like the steel replacement i got too but uh but i would not mind using the the iron sword for for quite a while but yeah for like my dragonborn character i guess uh they're going to be what some people think of as the default even though there is no cannon or whatever but he's going to be a nord heavy armor two-handed weapon um, I might actually for him end up, you know, I'm, I'm just looking at swords all the time because I, I like swords, but uh, I probably for him would actually use an axe. Why don't we take a look at a battle axe? Battle axe. Yeah, that looks pretty sweet. I kept being on the fence of, uh, I kept being on the fence of trying the Lean Wolf's better shaped weapon replacer version. 
for this. You know what? Let's, uh, why don't we just load it up and compare? We'll just do the Nordic Battle Axe. See, so yeah, I, I keep being on the verge of, like, for the higher tier weapons, wanting to, because Lean Wolf's better shaped weapons are still, they're smaller than vanilla, but they're bigger than, like, believable weapons. Um, so for things like maybe this and Daedric weapons, uh, for example, and, and maybe Dragonbone weapons, maybe I will use Lean Wolf's uh, models instead. Because, like, obviously, Daedric weapons are made for Daedra. <laughs> and uh, even though I'm sure there's varying degrees of strength and stuff, generally, I think we think Daedra are, are strong, like, average Daedra are stronger than uh, average humans. I'll, I'll put it back for now until I can decide whether I'm going to, like, put the, like, Nordic Daedra and Dragonbone back to better shaped weapons. Uh, I'm just going to keep everything believable weapons for now. Because I was working out how I want my weapon tier, as you can see here. Because uh, I essentially want to limit the spread of the base weapon damage, and so I'm using great swords uh, as a as just to figure out how, uh, in what tier each weapon type is going to go. And I ended up making a number of changes just for like a combination of lore and fun sake. Because I'm trying to balance it so that there's basic weapons for humans, elves, and orcs. I just don't hate me. I don't know much about the beast races. <laughs> so yeah, the whole point here is trying to have a uh, weapon progression that makes sense for different races. Because not that I'm going to stick to it. Like, I'm not going to say that humans can only have human weapons and elves can only have elf weapons. But generally, I would like them to. And definitely, like, when they start out, they are likely to have uh, weapons that make sense for, for them. Also, depending on where they live, obviously. If a Khajiit was born and raised in Skyrim, they're probably less likely to have a, a sword from uh, elsewhere. I think is where they're from. Using Silverthorn's weapons, Silverthorn's weapons has these blade uh, options that look a lot like orc weapons. So I decided to make, and it has a, uh, a a less shiny version. So I decided to make the, and it's technically steel in in Silverthorn, but uh, I just decided to place. I'm going to place it in the iron tier so that it can fit the same. Uh, rationale for the iron and silver uh, human swords and then the next tier is steel stuff honed ancient swords dwemer and then skyforge steel nord hero ebony and then yeah this is kind of a uh, bigger change is making orcanium more in the middle instead of a beginning tier because like i said i made this the beginning tier for orcs the next tier the carved nordic stuff glass and i am actually moving dragon bone down partially because with the realistic armors mod with all of nord nord war ua stuff the dragon bone armor is you know it looks like it's made of it's real ish bone looking armor that looks like some like ancient bone stuff we've recovered before so while it's like still fantastical in the sense it's it's like a, a more real den mundane kind of fantastical and i decided i i liked how those looked and i wanted to keep them and then this is where the only change i'm thinking of making uh, based on what I've done so far, is that for this last tier, I'm going to use the uh, vanilla or, you know, like updated vanilla textures for these uh, armors and weapons for the stall rim. I'm going to use Lean Wolf's better shaped weapons for the uh, stall rim and Daedric weapons, uh, since they are just kind of, they, they still look more fantasy, but they're not as big as the, the original vanilla weapon still. And that's just because they're like the stall rim supposed to be, uh, and as you can maybe figure from how it looks here, the stall rim in my order is like the ultimate Nord weapon that you can get, which is nice because I also have that one mod that distributes stall rim weapons to a uh, high level high level Draugr. And the whole point is that they were buried with them, so that literally fits in with the with the lore. And then yeah, Daedra weapons obviously they're for Daedra. Yeah, I think most people agree Daedra are generally stronger. Average Daedra are stronger than average humans so it just makes sense for me to keep those more fantasy looking than what believable believable weapons does but everything in the other four tiers will be more realistic looking uh and then i'll show you on the mod pages but i added this uh i changed the names just for my own naming rationale but since the realistic armors mod makes ebony and some and uh elven and stuff look more realistic i decided to have standalone elven and ebony armor sets that glow that will be used for like legendary characters. I don't know if any of my player characters through uh, Proteus will end up using them or not, but I might use them for like, you know, for a bad guy or something. Now I've got two here. Uh, they're both from the same guy, I think. Yeah. 
but the Silverthorn weaponry thing, this is the whole standalone package, which I'm going to use to for my characters to have, as I described, the uh, these orcish blades. These are the silver ones, obviously. They have the silver property for the 20 extra damage to undead. And then these are the dark steel. I'm going to treat these as, uh, well, for the orcish ones at least, I'm going to treat them as iron for the purposes of damage. <laughs> and then... Um, just because I, I like the look of them and I've used them before, I also use this version that replaces the silver swords with the arming sword and long sword looking variants, not these ones, the the blades as he calls them. So yeah, those. Uh, this is the glowing, this is elven armor with blue glowing stuff on it. It also does the, the weapons. The weapons are, I don't think they're in the, the picture, but... Uh, the weapons are vanilla size. They do still look silly to me, but like I said, this is like legendary armor. So we'll see. <laughs> and just because they have this armor doesn't mean they have to use the weapons. Um, in fact, I'm going to try to avoid that some of the time. And then I got this glowing. I got the uh, gold one specifically, I think is here. Yeah. So I always like black and gold. All right. So not that I want to talk about it much, but I've had a rough couple days with uh, trying to get off anxiety medication i've been taking for the last couple years yeah as you can imagine i'm just having a lot of anxiety and uh i kind of ran up against a problem while i was and uh, i essentially really got focused on getting the combat to work like how i i think it should it still wasn't quite there and the only thing i hadn't tried yet was using a uh, a poise mod to add on to valhalla and right there <laughs> really began a, a cascade of choices that just really shook everything up and took me quite a while and a, and a number of mods as you might be able to see here from the top. So once I decided I needed a poise mod to see if that and to forego the because stamina blocking is essentially just another way of doing the same thing poise does. Uh, between the options that Valhalla recommended for poise, uh, this is the one that it and it's because uh, I think it's down here. Yeah, this add on and rebalancing thing. These ones work with Anniversary, anniversary Edition 640 and uh, the one uh, Loki's Poise Overhaul. I think only works up to 6359 or whatever so far. And then, even though the base chocolate thing does not have many requirements or anything, the this add-on that adds so much good stuff uh, did have a number of recommendations that were like, based on everything said down here, were pretty strong recommendations. But they were good. So... First of all, for now, I'm not saying I, I, I might check out Sekiro later, but it, I just didn't want to <laughs> learn another thing right now. But it was pretty insistent that you needed either this or this, and Phoenix does not, I think also does not work on 640 Anniversary Edition. So I had to do Blade and Blunt, and uh, that, yeah, I think I can start that here. That just had another, a number of uh, things, because, well, either that or maybe this armor thing. One of those required the Scrambled Bugs, which needed a Valkyrie patch. Blade and Bl Blunt also had this extra patch for being used with Valkyrie. There were a couple things like that that needed to have uh, fixers for Valkyrie. And then there were two of these that uh, there were versions that people made for original Skyrim Special Edition. And then so you had to download these, the original versions, and then also download their updated counterparts for to be used with 640. And then one of these mods <laughs> had a patch for, for Dragon War, which I had been meaning to install, and I knew it didn't have any requirements or anything. So I went ahead and installed it. But then there was like another two things all of a sudden that was like, oh, those are mods that I'm going to install eventually, but not right now. <laughs> or else this is because it just feels like it's never going to end sometimes. You just go down a rabbit hole of mod after mod after mod. So I finally made a list. Uh, and this just reminds me to reinstall Dragon War to see what patches it has. And that will remind me because it was like I had a patch for Worms Tooth and Legacy of the Dragonborn. And so, yeah, as I said earlier, you know, I kind of did the best I could. I just was not in a, in a place to record while I was doing this, but I felt like I, I had to fix it. And uh, even though I've done it before, these are all mods that I haven't used before. So I was very nervous about installing so many and just expecting it to work. And then on top of all that, it said on Chocolate Poise that you don't technically need Valhalla. And uh, since I wasn't using timed blocking or anything, and I can turn off stuff in, in Blade and Blunt, I decided to turn off Valhalla for now. But I just finished testing it just now and uh, turned back on Valravin. Because even though 
I forget, it might be on here, but one of these mods I installed noted that if it's too hard, you could do something to set it back. I actually found it wasn't hard enough, uh, even on Master. So I turned back on my Valraven stuff and tried it out, and uh, it seems to be working, and it seems to be in a place. I think there's just like a couple behaviors I don't understand because I haven't looked through <sighs> Blade and Blunt's and some of these other mods is, and poise as thoroughly as I have the ones that I had intended on using. But yeah, let me go ahead and show you. You can see here I've disabled all of uh, Val Robin stuff except for these. I could, you know what, I guess until I n know for sure. Because the only thing I care about from Val Robin was the AI uh, changes. So I will turn these off for now just to make sure. Even though I'm pretty sure if this was winning for some reason, but this loads after. Or I mean, this loads before, right? Val Robin inverted loads at 47. Blade and Blunt loads at 48. So yes, after. And Poise, 53. Yeah, yeah. So both Blade and Blunt and Chocolate Poise load after Val Robin. So these shouldn't have any effect or anything. And I'm not sure if the cloak has any effect on the AI. So I just haven't touched it. And I have something that patches the cloak into the other mods anyway. So is what it is for now. And I will say, I, I say it's easy, but I do keep using potions. <laughs> but also, I keep not blocking, I've noticed. See, that one forward move is pretty pretty useful. <laughs> Go inside and show you against the remaining indoor people. See, I need to just block more. See, and these guys are... Yep, see, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, it's like every time I mess up, it's a pretty significant amount. <laughs> Oh boy, definitely kill the magic user <laughs> for getting close to me. <laughs> oh, now nah, he's out of stamina, but the poise is still up oh, there. I uh, see, so I've only got a second. Oh, there goes my poise. Oh, and my stamina. <laughs> I see, it took a while to... But yeah, you get the idea. It, uh, this definitely feels pretty much, you know, the, the specific balancing of like how much stamina and, you know, compared to which enemies... And all of that will will still need to be worked out, but uh, that definitely has like all of the features and everything makes sense uh, now. So even though it was very stressful, and I I freaked myself out a lot more just because of my own issues, but uh, I did eventually get there. While I'm uh, inside in the dark here, I guess I'll just show a couple uh, of the other things I've installed too. Oh, I've got another save actually for that, so I don't have to do all this. I've got to go back to the main menu. I think. Oh yeah, so I think I gave my guy everything here. <laughs> so yeah, there's glowing and non-glowing. I mean, I only wanted the uh, the glowing versions, but I could certainly probably find a use. <sighs> yeah, it's that sheath that looks so <laughs> ridiculously big. This doesn't, the sword doesn't look quite as bad, but it's probably just the, the little in curve. But yeah, this is that stuff. I like it. It's cool looking. There we go. Inside, probably better to see glowy things. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Obviously, I just didn't talk about it, but I just wanted something that kind of offset it. Um, was there any other armors? No. Uh, weapons. Yeah, um, obviously the, the ruined weapons was good to get. And to be clear, these ones that are standalone, this this glowing elven stuff, the gold ebony, and these replacers, the non-glowing ones, these are just going to be for my characters. I got the versions that don't integrate them into the level list because they're just more about the lore for my characters and not uh, having everyone in the world have the exact things necessarily that they should need. That just seems like too much hassle for me. Like I said, this is the, I did that whole replacer for the silver weapon, so this is the silver longsword now. Looks amazing. Like I said, there's normal, uh, darker looking iron versions too that don't have the, the undead enchantment. Like I said, this is going to be what I consider orcish iron and silver. So there's the silver one. And here's what's going to be orc iron. <laughs> Still looks pretty fancy for orcish, but uh, you know, you pretend anything you want, really. I don't care. <laughs> the Nordic sword matches the armor pretty good. I bet it matches the rune stuff, too. Yeah, it's a little dimmer, but uh, that's the kind of thing you never know. You can end up using that kind of sword instead. Oh, did I already kill everyone in this save? Ugh, I'll just spawn a bandit. Or did I still have that one up there with all the stuff? Hey, there's a guy here still. Sweet. Oh, God. All right. Thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Ha! <laughs>